So on the menu today, it's Julia Child's pumpkin pie. That's not French. Oh! <laughs> bon appetit. All right, so I'm up here today without a cookbook. I know, it feels kind of weird. I'm a little exposed, but there's a good reason why. It's Thanksgiving season. Where I'm living right now, currently. Not where I'm from. It's American Thanksgiving. And I thought, well, you know, maybe Julia has a uh, pumpkin pie recipe that we can make today. You know, I know it's not a French dessert or anything like that, so it's not gonna be in one of the French cooking cookbooks, but hey, maybe we can Google it, find out. Bingo. Julia Child's fluffy pumpkin pie. Uh, actually it says Julia Child's Aunt Helen's fluffy pumpkin pie. This recipe is coming from when Julia was writing a column in a magazine. She published the recipe there in the 80s. When I was born, I was comparing it with like other typical pumpkin pie recipes and you know, Julia has a couple tricks up her sleeve today, which we've come to expect. We need to start with the dough for the pie crust first. And you just need ones. That's if you have your own pie crust recipe, family one, you know, one from grandma or whatever, I'm gonna use the one from everyone's, everyone's grandma, Julia Child. <laughs> Short crust pastry. Pat, pat brise. Pat brise. Pat brise. Pretty close, actually. A good French pastry crust is tender, crunchy, and buttery. Um, I know this recipe kind of well. I would say really well, but we'll get into that shortly. Let's just get started, and then I'll tell you a sob story. Bowl me. Thank you. Also, one thing I should mention is that I'm doubling this recipe today for reasons that I will get into shortly. So let me start with 10 ounces, 284 grams of all-purpose flour that I also mixed in a teaspoon of salt and two big pinches of sugar. This is eight ounces, 226 grams of chilled, cubed into half inch pieces. And I'm using European butter today, which I heard is the best type of butter to use for pastries. Like I did this like butter test a few months ago when I was making puff pastry between American butter and European butter or Irish butter, which is what this is. And you could see the difference. And it's because European butter has like a higher butter fat percentage, which means it's gonna melt quicker and it's gonna give a more like buttery taste to it and probably a whole bunch of other great things that I'm not too familiar with. I'm just finding out about this stuff now. So anyway, I'm not an expert. Only my fingertips, I'm gonna squeeze the butter and the flour together. As Julia says, the fat needs to be broken into pieces the size of oatmeal flakes. It's very specific. I've learned along the way that when you're like, mixing and blending things together, such as flour and butter. When it comes to pastry dough, less is always more. So even when I think I should keep going, you probably shouldn't, Jamie. They're still kind of crumbly. I like it like that. All right, so this is around four tablespoons, 125 milliliters of very cold water. Just add in a little bit to get started. Julia says kind of like cup your hand together and like do some weird thing, but I find if I just use my fingertips, just a little bit more and you're done. So I only used around half the water, but I think that's the right call. And uh, I got this into like a rough, sh sh very rough looking ball, and it's not too damp or sticky, and it's still cold enough, which is good. Um, I think I need to um, do something else here. Floured surface. Oh, this is that weird thing she wants me to do. Okay, don't touch the dough. You don't want it to heat up too quickly. Two spoonful bits at a time. I have to push with the heel of my hand, not the palm, away from me in like six inch like skid marks. Skid marks? Smears, <laughs> whatever. And I'm just doing this like once. There, that constitutes the final blending of flour and butter. Knead it into a fairly smooth round ball. Kind of sprinkle some flour. Where's the freaking? Okay. Sprinkle some flour on top and on the bottom, and then it goes into some plastic wrap into a fairly smooth ball. Okay, so I'm gonna get this into the fridge for two hours. A couple days ago, I was filming this exact recipe, standing right here. Actually, this is the uh, sob story, by the way. So you might want to buckle up and grab some tissues because whew, what happened was I, uh, I didn't get very far. I got as far as the pie crust in the tin. And then I was looking at it and I thought to myself, have you forgotten everything that you've taught yourself in the last five years? Do you not know how to make a pastry? 
I mean, I've made several pies in my day, but it's like, that ain't it. I rolled it out way too thin. It looked ridiculous. It wasn't never gonna hold the pumpkin pie filling in it. I feel like you could have done a better job with that. I gotta get past this next little part. And that's the reason why I doubled the recipe, just to cover my ass. Anyway, is that a sob story? It is for me, but yeah, I'll get over it. Moving on to the pumpkin pie filling, which is fluffy, by the way. Bowl me. Yeah, that's perfect. And what I gotta do is separate my eggs, which is, this is one of the things that Julia does a bit different. Sorry, I need one more, a big, big one. Yeah, that's, that will do. That's it though. Thank you. Four egg yolks, two cans, 15 ounces each of pumpkin puree. I know it's in a can. You're thinking, well, why in a Julia Child recipe would you not be using an actual pumpkin? You know, roasting that up and then pureeing that. But according to this recipe, she's using the cans. And I think, you know, sometimes Julia just wants to take it easy. So do I, so I'm happy to oblige. Honestly, Julia, I really appreciate this. One cup of light brown sugar, one cup plus two tablespoons of granulated sugar. So a pinch of salt, three tablespoons of molasses. This is your grandma's. The molasses is a little specialty ingredient from Julia Child in your pumpkin pie. Also optional, of course, but I always exercise the option when I can. Dark rum, it's optional, but no, it's not. Three tablespoons of a good dark rum. This is also a very special Julia Child ingredient in pumpkin pie. It's three teaspoons of cinnamon, three teaspoons of ginger, quarter teaspoon of ground cloves. The question you have to answer with your own nutmeg is ground or whole? I think if I use the ground stuff when I have the whole in my hand, uh, people would think that I'm nuts. Fresh nutmeg. That should be around a quarter teaspoon worth. Did I add cloves? Yes, I did, I added cloves. One cup, 250 mils of heavy cream. Three quarter cup of milk. You can use a mixer or a blender. And the blender would probably be the safer option, but you know, I like to live a little dangerously. But on, on the low speed. And she says that this needs to be a soft puree and it shouldn't be any thicker than, I'm hoping this, because if it is, then you're supposed to add a little more milk, but I think I'm good. There is more that we have to do with this filling, but what I have to focus on next is the dough. Whew. The time has come. The dough is firmed up into something rock solid. You know, Julia goes into great detail about how to do this next step. I've done it before, I've succeeded, I've failed, I told you my problems, we had a good laugh. I think at this point, I need to rely on my intuition. First, let me uh, pound this until it is something rollable. Splitting this pie dough in half. That can hang out in the fridge while I figure out what the hell I'm doing. Place a rolling pin in the center of the dough and roll the pin back and forth with firm but gentle pressure to start the dough moving. And then with a firm, even stroke rolling away from you, start just below the center and roll to within an inch from the far edge. Rotate. I'm trying to go for a circle here. I don't want to go any thinner than that. Okay, I have these new pie dishes and I'm just gonna bring the pie shell up and into that. I just tore this one. I've pinpointed the problem. I think I know exactly what's going on. Julia tells me I need a nine inch pie dish. That's what I got. So I got my nine inch pie dish and I'm following the measurements as she's given in the book. And I even doubled it because I was gonna make two pie doughs. Well, I find that when I half it, uh, when I half the dough that I have, one and one, it should be correct, um, I'm finding it's not enough and I'm rolling it way too thin in order to fit this dish. And I shouldn't even have to do that. So yeah, I think the problem comes down to the recipe in the end. I think, 
You know, don't quote me on that. Anyway, I combined both halves. I rolled it back up into one. Hopefully this is gonna work. I have it in the freezer for an hour. We'll go from there. Nice and smooth. I don't need to butter the pie dish because there's plenty of butter in this dough. I need to make sure that there is no gaps between the, the dough and the dish. I think we're in the clear, but I'm gonna need to crimp this thing. I'm not a really good crimper, so I have to kind of figure it out. I get the gist of it. We need to have flour on our fingertips, I believe. Okay, so I fold it. And I believe what I do is two fingers on the outside and push my thumb, th kind of push it through a bit. Oh, like that, yeah. Ooh, okay, okay. I can live with this. Well, I got my own little crimping style and I don't know if it's the correct way, but it's the only way I can figure it out in the panic state that I'm in currently. Okay, is there anything that I need to kind of patch up before I give this the A-OK? -okay? okay, we worked hard to get here. Okay, tin foil in there. Some dried beans here. These are chickpeas. You use them as a pie weight. He's gotta be covering every part of this pie shell. Into the oven for eight to nine minutes to start. Then we'll take it out and we'll have to do something, but just to start. Like I can see as soon as I remove this, there's gonna be significant shrinkage. <laughs> like this whole pie crust is just gonna So I think I need to keep this in much longer with the pie weight in. It can cook to its proper shape without shrinking. I'll keep it in for like 10 minutes maybe. I don't know, I'll keep an eye on it. Okay, so I've removed the pie weight. I think this thing is gonna hold. Prick the bottom with a fork. That's gonna prevent it from rising. And this is gonna go back into the oven like this for two to three minutes. And this whole process here is called blind baking. Why is it called blind baking? I have no idea, I couldn't figure it out. You're just pre-baking the crust before you add the filling. You're gonna ensure that there's not significant shrinkage, that the bottom isn't gonna puff up that it's cooked all the way through the crust that is, and it's gonna be nice and crunchy and flaky and beautiful and uh, all those great things. That's why we do it, the blind bake. <laughs> Quick cameo appearance from the Silver Fox. I'm dividing the filling recipe in half now. So instead of four egg whites, I need two egg whites. So I don't wanna waste your time talking about stiff peaks because, well, I mean, in all honesty, how many minutes of your life have I wasted talking about stiff peaks? Pinch of salt, like around medium, medium high speed. Tablespoon of sugar that I'm gonna gradually add into my soft peaks. Turn it up high. Stiff peaks. As you can imagine, this is where the fluffy in the fluffy pumpkin pie comes into play. I gotta add in my, um, add in the stiff peaks a little, a little first to start. Get that all introduced. Two different consistencies going on here, so they need to meet and say hi. Let's add the rest. Fold it in, cut through to the bottom, flip it over. Okay, so these egg whites maybe were just over whipped by like, I don't know, like seconds maybe? I don't know. They're fine, but they're also not fine. I don't know, let's just go with it. I'm gonna add this into my pie shell. Perfect. That has been filled to just below the rim of the pan. That's good. I'm very curious if this is supposed to like rise up like a souffle or something. Uh, that would be a sight to see. I'm kind of all for that. If it happens, if it doesn't happen, then I won't be disappointed. Or I kind of will be. I don't know. I, overall, I'm just kind of uh, happy I made it this far. Oven's at 450. After around 15 minutes, the crust is golden. Yeah, yeah. Reduce the heat to 375. I'm gonna bake that for another 25 to 30 minutes. I should clean up. It's 
So I gotta take a tester. If I had a toothpick, that would be great. But I made a makeshift tester out of a plastic fork that I had lying around. I don't know if this is a good idea, but I'm gonna poke it and that came out clean. So I made a massive hole in there, but okay, whatever. The pie is done. So uh, I gotta immediately turn the oven off and then keep the door ajar while the oven cools off. This is gonna ensure that the filling doesn't become runny or like watery. You don't want that. And I wanna make sure that that pie cools completely. Oh, yeah. Oh, it gets harder and harder to get up. So last night I waited for this thing to come down to room temperature. It's taken a while, so I figure, you know what? Once it hits room temp, I'm gonna be done for the day. So I'm just gonna wrap it up, put it in the fridge, and I won't think about it until, well, today, the very next day. So here we are, and I'm looking at this pie, and I can see that the filling has tightened up a little bit. It separated itself from the crust. Also, there's these two gaping holes in the middle of my filling. Those are from that plastic fork. If you're gonna get something to poke the pie, make sure it's a toothpick. Jamie. One cup of heavy cream. Two tablespoons of icing sugar. And just a little bit of rum. Whipped cream. Okay, I mean, I guess that about does it. Order up! No, 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 no. Didn't go according to plan. I thought this was gonna be a good looking pie. I, <laughs> I, <laughs> yeah. The entire base of the pie crust is raw. From there onward, raw. In the moment, it never occurred to me to look underneath this pie dish. Supposed to be making two pies, ended up making one. I have leftover filling, which means I can take another crack at this son of a bitch. I think I'm aiming for around 13 inches wide so I have enough room to play around with. 13 inches, okay. Okay, so I've had to double Julia's pie dough recipe again today because the proportions that she's given me here, like the measurements, is not enough for just one pie, even though she says it should be uh, sufficient for an eight to nine inch shell. I'm just not finding that to be the case. I'm doing something a little differently when it comes to the blind baking. I'm not gonna follow, I'm not gonna follow our gal because I think that might be a little out of date. So I wrote it down because I was like doing a little research beforehand, I wrote it down. 425 degrees Fahrenheit for 20 to 30 minutes to start with the pie weight. And then after that, uh, well, we'll get there. We gotta get there first, that's the, that's the priority. Take a look at the old pie crust here, see what the hell's going on. I want it to be completely anchored to this freaking pie dish. Oh, that's anchored. Poke some fork holes in the base of this. Turn the oven down to 325, and without the pie weight, without the tin foil, this goes in for another 20 to 30. The Silver Fox, again. Okay, let's get this pie dish over here. Sans the baking tray. So what I wasn't putting into consideration the last time was that I had just picked up these glass pie dishes, which courtesy of Martha Stewart over here, glass heats up gently and evenly, priming the pie for a consistent but slightly slower bake than metal pie dishes. A metal pie dish. So for the past few years, I've been using a metal pie dish so maybe that's what the issue was. Oh, oven's ready for the pie. Um, so all the problems that have happened in this episode, I blame on this mother right here. 
I'm not gonna use this underneath the pie dish here because that might be blocking some of the heat up into the pro problem area. It's going au naturel right into the oven. I'm gonna do 13 minutes just to start and uh, here we go. It's go time, so uh, cross your fingers. Crossed. Turn the heat down to 375, bake for another 25 to 30. Okay, so this pie has cooled all the way down. Yeah, I, I did a little, uh, it's a little personal touch on the very top of this thing. Wasn't intentional, but it is what it is. I think that about does it. Order up! Okay, there's my piece. Uh, the camera was gonna fall over, so I had to catch that. So let's try that again. Crest looks good. It was another unexpected journey. There was no doubt that I was gonna have a second slice. <sighs> to good health. I've only made a few, you know, this many pies in my life or something, but I would say that's the top, top tier. This is it's fantastic. Definitely the best pumpkin pie I've ever had. Now it wasn't just the filling, that crust was so... You know what it tastes like? <laughs> like butter, like a buttery pie crust. It's the dream pie crust. It's crunchy, it's flaky buttery. I mean, it was like two pie crust recipes in, in, in one, uh, but whew, maybe that, that's the secret right there. Now the pumpkin pie filling was um, fantastic. I always say fantastic. Fantabulous. It was really, really scrumdillyumptious. I'm trying new words today. I don't know. They probably won't stick. First of all, it had like a little kick to it. It was spicy, a little bit spicy. You know what it reminded me of was um, those cinnamon heart candies that we would also eat when we were kids, saying scrum deliumptious. So we got the classic pumpkin spice taste to it. We got an overwhelming amount of cinnamon. There's molasses and rum. The filling is amazing. That pie crust, I don't know, came through in the end. I'm so proud of that pie crust. So if you're gonna have the choice between, you know, making that a couple times over the span of two days or so, or was it two and a half days? I can't even remember anymore. Or just buying a store-bought pumpkin pie? I would say, well, actually, you know what you should do? Learn from all the mistakes that I made today and then make this damn thing because you won't regret it. That's it. That's all. Happy Thanksgiving. American Thanksgiving. This was Jamie and Julia. Bon appetit. Au revoir. Okay, just so you know, I didn't eat all that. There's a slice over here. There's that slice that fell over over here. So that's not everything that I ate. So just so you know. Also, yes, I know this is kind of, uh, I mean, it's been hours and hours and hours since I made this.